Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are all welcome again today for our ninth monthly seminar series, which normally hold every, the last Saturday of every month. Um, our topic today is a topic that everyone is interested in, irrespective of uh, age group. If we remember, quite recently, we've been bombarded with what to eat and what not to eat, and how to eat and how not to eat. And in most of these messages, some of them clash with one another. One message will say, eat this. Another one will come and say, don't eat this. So as a result of that, we found a, a, an expert to Lou Follery, who is already online, to, to share this information with us uh, from the professional point of view instead of the junk messages that will be fed on social media. Before we proceed, I would like to invite uh, uh, Engineer Johnson Aoyomi to give us an opening prayer. Engineer Johnson. Father, we thank you for this meeting. We give you all the honors and glory for what we were yesterday, for what we are today, and for what we shall be. We thank you in Jesus' name. In this meeting, give all the understanding he has and how to understand and apply all shall be taught and hear in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the trainer and organizers. Thank you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, Engineer Johnson. So in the house today, we have uh, some elders of the uh, society. We have a past president, Professor Emeni Kewami. You are welcome, sir. Professor Wami, we are happy to have you in our midst today. Thank you. We also have uh, uh, Dr. Wada, an elder statesman who never missed this series. Thank you for coming again today, sir. Thank you, Mahmoud. This one is very special for me. I know. By your orange farm. You know, after COVID, we still go <laughs> and harvest. Uh, our national president, Engineer Onoche Anyaku, he wanted to log in even before me. He's always uh, on the point. I will give you the floor, sir, to, as usual, to say a few words before we proceed. Thank you, Mahmoud. Uh, as always, uh, I want to appreciate the HSC sectoral group uh, that is uh, more like, like the benchmark now uh, for performance as our sectoral groups uh, are taking root. Uh, you have uh, been the touch bearer. And for that, uh, on behalf of board and council, I want to appreciate the group. Uh, you have very, very uh, active and quality members. And uh, clearly, there is no successful industry without uh hsc so i'm not surprised that uh the hsc sectoral group is taking the lead 
I can only uh, encourage you guys to pull the entire society by the bootstraps so that we can, uh, in not too distant future, begin to meet the expectations of Nigerians. As I've always said, we exist as a society and as engineers to provide solutions to the everyday challenges of the society we live in. And uh, I only hope and believe that in due course, Nigerian Society of Chemical Engineers will as always, as is done worldwide, be the trailblazer in the engineering family. I, as we move on, I believe uh, we are more or less integrating other members of our engineering family into these webinars. Because, as always, engineering solutions are always multidisciplinary. And these webinars have created a very efficient framework for en us engaging each other and understanding each other, the roles of every, every discipline in uh, creating a better society for citizens of Nigeria. Uh, on that note, once again, I want to thank you, Mahmoud. I want to thank the guest lecturer. Uh, we all look forward to uh, this very, very important, very, very important lecture. Uh, nothing is actually more important to us humans than living healthy. And we can all see how not living well suddenly makes us very vulnerable to a rather, uh, to, to, to a tiny parasite that we, 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 we can't see. But when he enters our body, we don't stand a fighting chance if, our, if we have abused the same body. I hope at the end of this lecture, the takeaway will be how we can adjust, how we can recover, not just adjust in terms of looking forward and eating well, but also how we can recover yeah for those of us who have compromises here and there. Thank you very much. And good evening to all. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President, sir. Uh, before I introduce uh, uh, Madam Tolu, normally, we normally have a safety moment. But today, you agree with me, there's no safety moment other than what we eat. So our safety moment today is the topic is safe. We all know that we are what we eat. So the safety moment today, we listen to her carefully and arrange our bags of uh, question. I'm willing to extend the session for today beyond the normal period if need be, because this is a topic that has been bothering everybody. I also want to mention that for the first time, we are having a presenter that is not a member of our uh, society. I think it's important we mention that. And um, at the end of the, the presentation, so that we'll be able to appreciate her properly. And uh, with me, in the engine room, I have uh, uh, Dr. Yusuf Atta, who is going to give the, uh, the wrap up. I also have Victor Chinasa, also in the 
uh, backroom providing support. You can see that our presenter, our guest, is eager to share this uh, uh, knowledge. You all, we must all have all seen the profile that I shared. She's a lead dietitian at Dietic Consultants Limited. She's a consumer nutritionist, a passionate dietitian, an expert in dietary management with over 12 years uh, practice. She has MSc in public health, specializing in uh, uh, health management. So look, he had her first degree from the Federal University of Technology, Agriculture in Abekoto in nutrition and dietetics before proceeding to University College Ibadan for, the, for an internship program. It's while she was there that she, 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 she wrote a qualifying exam for TOPC. She has a master's degree, as I mentioned earlier, in public health with specialization in health management option from the College of Medicine of University of Lagos. Tolu was the first in-house dietitian at Tradington Multispecialist Hospital in Victoria Island, Lagos, where she worked assiduously to develop policies and procedures for food service, uh, for, for food service, sorry, develop policies and procedures of food service for accreditation with the Council for Health Service Accreditation of South Africa. She pioneered as the clinical nutritionist and dietitian also at Vedic Life Care uh, in, in Lake, Lagos, a diagnostic hospital, and that's where I first met her. This is a place I normally go for my annual uh, medical checkup. Anybody that has been there, you see that she will be the last person you see before you exit. She will review all your reports, all the drugs that has been given to you, all the DC and she will tell you if you follow, if you watch what you eat, you will not need to take any drugs. At the same time, she was also visiting the dietitian at Rainbow Specialist Hospital in Lakey. For over, 12, for over the 12 year period as a professional, she has successfully managed a wide range of chronic health conditions, including cardiovascular diseases, renal problems, and endocrine disorders, that's diabetes and obesity. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. President, I present to you Ms. Tolu Folari, the dietitian and public health expert, lead dietitian and dietetic consultants as our guest presenter for today. Madam, you have the floor now. We take if you have questions, you hold them until after her presentations. If you think you may not be able to remember the question at the end of the presentation, post them in the chat area. We will attend to all questions today before we close. Thank you very much. Ms. Madam, Ms. Tolu, you have the floor. Madam, unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Okay. Do you have a call? No. Hello, Madam, we are not hearing you. We're not hearing you. Unmute yourself. Yeah, I'm seeing her mic is unmuted actually from this side, from what I'm seeing from my side. No, 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 no. We got it all. No, just, just hold on. We are working on it. Just, just give us a few seconds.
Hello, Madam, are you hearing me? You can try and mute yourself now. Hello? Hello, Madam. Hello, madam. Same, she is not hearing. Maybe drop her a message. Okay. Now, uh, in order for us not to lose more time, I will disconnect her. We actually recorded a backup copy. I will play. Maybe somebody will help me. We will be watching the room when she connects back because I believe that she, uh, audio devices are not connected properly. So as soon as she comes back, she will take over from whichever slide that the recording has reached. Because I'm sure between last night and today, she may have, okay. So that settles it. Mr. President, with your permission to play the recorded uh, version. Uh, Mahmoud, I don't have any objection. Just uh, my mark, my mark was switched off when I was looking for my phone. Okay, sir. Mm. Okay, sir. Victor. I should share. I'm trying to do it. Just just give me a minute. Yeah. I don't know this one. Can I go ahead and share? Victor, go ahead. Okay. Uh, oh, hello. Okay, madam, you are back. Yes, I think I can hear you now. Okay. Okay, we are not hearing you before. Can you share your presentation now and talk? We are not hearing okay. you before too. Can you hear me now? Yes, we are hearing you now. Okay, yeah, I, I said good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for giving me the time. I have just 20 minutes, so I'm going to be very fast about it. So our outline today is going to be introduction, choices that we need to make. Before now, what you should be doing now, building your immunity, and then we'll go to conclusion. You, so you, by need, way to share, you need to share the screen, madam. Okay. Mm, so uh, that we can follow you, you can, we can follow you from there as well. Okay, okay, okay. So I'm sharing the screen now. Okay, ma.
Please let her unmute herself. Okay, am I good now? Yes, you are good. Yes. Okay, so what is the new normal? The ultimate goal in this time is surviving this era, making sure that we stay healthy, building a strong biodefense against the biological threat, which is the virus, which every one of us knows. The COVID-19. Research has shown that when you live healthy, when your immunity is strong, the rate at which you come down, if you are even infected, the prognosis is better than when your immunity is down. So today, we'll be focusing on healthy living and how you can build your immunity. As it applies to individuals, healthy living, the practice of health enhancing, health enhancing behavior, meaning the choices you make that are consistent with supporting, improving, maintaining health, or simply put, living healthy. It implies the physical, mental, and spiritual capacity to make healthy choices, meaning mentally you should be psychologically ready to make that healthy choice. And you are just like this, my friend, that is here on the screen. Is in between what should I do, what should I take? Should I take the hamburger or should I go for apple? Don't you worry, today we'll get to know what and what we need to be doing so that you will know within yourself that you are making health, healthy choice. Before now, WHO has advised us that we should eat more of unprocessed food, we should take fruits and vegetables daily, we should take little or no added sugar in our meals and we should use LD oil in cooking. Eat less, of five grams, eat less than five grams of salt daily, and you should exercise. But because of the pandemic, there had been review of what it means to make healthy choices, of what it means to live healthy. And that is what we're going to be focusing on this evening. It is advised now that you should eat fresh and unprocessed food, still that way, but there has been a little change in what and what, before it used to be, Make sure you take five servings of fruit and vegetable like everybody knows. But there has been a review. We'll talk about that. Drink enough water, eat moderate amounts of fat and oil, eat less sugar and salt. Avoid eating out. Actually, it's not only because eating out could be unhealthy, but because the guideline states that we should make sure we don't we so, social distance, social distancing. So when you go to eat trees, you know, there are a lot of people that you don't even know where they're coming from. You don't know whether they are positive or not. So eating out could be detrimental at this time. Instead of eating out, we actually advise you order your food and they bring it home for you. Exercise is very, very important and paramount at this point in time. We'll get to that and we'll discuss more about that. So let's just go straight on. What does it mean to eat fresh and eat unprocessed food? We advise that you eat fresh eat fruits, vegetables, and legumes. The example are the lentils, your beans, is a good source of energy for you. Nuts and whole grain, unprocessed maize, millet, wheat, brown rice. And I realize that at times people think brown rice, you need to buy the imported one. All are local rice that are not fully processed or polished can be regarded as your brown rice. Starchy tubers or roots such as potatoes, yam, cassava, they are still good and healthy. But what portion of that are we supposed to take? The next slide is going to tell you precisely how much. We say daily now, increase your fruit servings from usual advice of four servings, uh, two servings to four, and two cups of vegetables, which I'm going to represent in a pictorial form so that we'll be able to understand what it means. We say you should eat 180 grams of grain, 160 grams of meat and poultry. When it comes to eating of meat, we prefer you to do more of poultry, which is your chicken and fish, rather than doing 
red meat. But even if you want to do red meat, the one you should do is the goat meat, of which the limbs are the best part. The torso seems to have more fat, so we prefer you to do the limbs and grill it. We should do less of frying, we should eat less of fried food. So now, let's see how your plate should actually look like. I hope everybody's seeing that picture. And the first one, you can see that half of the plate is made up of vegetable, one quarter is your spaghetti, and one quarter is your steak chicken. And the second one also represents an African plate when everybody likes to eat jollof rice. The truth is you can eat your jollof rice, but we advise you, if you don't have salad or you're not a salad person, you could do your vegetables. And you could also do the one fourth of the plate is protein. And the question I want each and every one of us to answer this evening is, is your plate looking like this? I can tell you without even seeing a dietitian, when you follow this plate, it is good for you. It helps you to make healthy choices. It helps you to stay healthy all things being equal. Now examples of fruit servings, meaning example of one serving of each varieties of fruits that we have. As you can see on the screen, we have apple. One medium size of apple is a serving. 12 pieces of your grapes, this one, this green one, which we have the variant of the wine, or that the other color available is like the wine. 12 pieces of that is a serving. And at times, I see some of my patients, they will buy a box of grapes and they will finish it. They say, actually, we do that, so we should live healthy. But I can tell you, for every good thing, excess of it makes it bad. And that is why I'm here today, so that we could shed more light. You can see that fist, the guy's hand. Any fruit that is bigger than your fist is actually on the big side is actually more than a serving. And banana, for those of us who are banana lovers, we said you should do four servings. Don't finish a bunch of banana. And you can see the watermelon, like the pizza cut. That's what we want to be your pizza. So for tips, for the tips, we say for snacks, choose raw vegetables, fruits, fresh fruits rather than foods that are high in sugar, fat, or salt. Do not overcook your vegetables and fruits. This can lead to loss of important vitamins, which is very, very essential at this time. Our vitamins are the ones that build our body and help, us, and help us to have higher immunity. So when using canned or dried vegetables and fruits, choose varieties without added sugar or salt. Drink a lot of water. It is very, very important that you hydrate yourself because water is essential for life. It transports nutrients and compounds in the blood, regulates your body temperature, and gets the waste out of your body, lubricates and cushions the joints. Drink at least two to three liters of water, which is equivalent to like four to six sachets of water. If you're using your sachet water, if you are using all the bottled water, it's like you taking say three to four of that. You can also consume other drinks like fruits and vegetables that contain water, like your watermelon. You can also take tea and coffee. They are all ways of getting your liquid right off. There, give you some But of all things, your water is the best choice that I want you to make. Use healthy oil. When it comes to oil, consume unsaturated fats found in feed, nuts, olive oil, soya, canola, and the likes, rather than saturated fat found in fatty meat, butter, coconut oil, cream, cheese, ghee, and lard. Choose white meat, you know, like I said in the first slide, we prefer you to do poultry and fish, which are generally low in fat, rather than red meat. So when you are making your choices, think about fish. And for anybody above 40 years of age, I want to say that scaly fish is the best. It's one of the best choices you can make. For that, we have a tilapia, we have the croaker, we have um, barracuda, to mention but few. 
And now you can see on the screen comparison of oil. The reason why I'm showing this slide is to give us an insight into the list of oils that are actually good for our heart. When we talk about lipid profile, lipid profile is a cardiovascular marker that when you do your test, if your LDL is on the high side, it will tell you you are at risk of having cardiovascular issues. So what are the oils that can help you that you should use in cooking? And I always sound this warning. If you go to eateries, eateries will not use canola oil to cook your food, except you're very, very sure that it's a high level kind of eatery. So we recommend you do use the likes of canola oil. You can see it has like 62% of unsaturated fat, which is good for your heart. We had vice olive, we had vice almond, we had vice hazelnut oil, which are examples of oil that are very, very high in your mono unsaturated fatty acid that is good for the heart. Eat less sugar and salt. We advise very on, on daily basis that you limit your daily salt intake to less than five grams, approximately like say a teaspoon of salt in your meal. And even further, for some people who are hypertensive, we always advise a lesser dose of that, like half of a teaspoon, coming to like 1,500 milligram of sodium. Avoid foods that are high in salt and sugar. And the, one of the easiest um, example that comes to mind is your Pringles or your coated popcorns and the likes. It's not that you cannot do popcorn, but you can do a low salt, a low sugar popcorn, if you like. Limit intake of soft drinks and sodas. Because of the time, I couldn't put that slide in, wherein we see the number of cubes of sugar that we have in our soft drinks. But one thing is all of us, we do know that most of these drinks are very high in sugar. Rather than doing that, we advise that you should choose fresh fruits instead of sweet snacks, such as cookies, cakes, and chocolates. And I've, like the picture I've shown you before, example of one serving of fruits is one apple, or one orange, or one finger of banana, or one thin slice of watermelon, or half slice of mango. For those of us who are lovers of mango, if your weight is on the high side, or you are diabetic, mango is not for you. You can see that it's just a half slice. So by the time you take a whole mango, and we have even varieties of sizes of mangoes. There are some mangoes that are so big that could fill in as a four servings of your fruit for the day. So it is good to know that apples, oranges, bananas should actually be taking a minimal amount. Be physically active. Like I said, it's very, very important. Exercise is a subset of physical activity that is planned. Like my, some of my patients will say, ah, madam, I don't sit down in the office. I use the staircase. I don't use the elevator. I take 1,000 steps a day. It's actually better than doing nothing. But I'll tell you that repetitive acti um, activities such as walking, dancing, gardening, biking, even house chores are several options of several activities you could do that will say you are exercising. And it's a minimum of 30 minutes. But the review says that we should try and do 45 minutes. I know I have a lot of CEOs and MDs that I'm talking to this evening who in this present time we are doing from one Zoom meeting to the other and you even don't have time to stand up from your desk. It is high time we all know that physical activity is very, very important. It also builds your immunity. That we have a lot of advantage for doing exercise. So if you've not been doing that during this time, it is important you plan it and make out time for exercise. So what are those other things you can do to build your immunity? Ways to boost your immunity. The first one is stay active, which I just finished explaining to us. Be someone that exercise. Watch your diet. What do I mean by watching your diet? If, you're, if you've been eating, if you've not been watching what you eat, if you've not been careful, at least the few slides we've shared before now, I've shed light on how your plate should look, what a serving of fruit looks like. 
you can begin to work on that to watch your diet you can stay on top of stress too it is very very important because stress has been seen or has been known to produce hormones that reduces your immunity and get enough sleep this is where a lot of my patients fight with me they'll be like madam it's not possible but the truth is research has shown that if you get less than seven to eight sleep you are putting yourself under stress so even if you don't get enough sleep it's a stressor for you the least hours of sleep you should get in every 24 hours is seven to eight hours so it is important don't feel intimidated when some people tell you i don't sleep up to eight hours i sleep four hours in 24 hours no that's not the way to go and another thing you also need to look at is being strategic about supplements a whole lot of people have been um, making money from that now telling people oh this supplement is good this one is okay but i can tell you from research that when you eat healthy and you exercise you will actually not need to use supplements rather than using supplements you will need to eat healthy and make healthy choices so i'm putting it to us this evening the first thing you need to do in building your immunity is not thinking about buying supplements or stocking your shelf with supplements. Rather, the first two things you should think about is, am I exercising well and am I eating well? So now, examples of food that can help you to build your immunity. Vitamin A is very important. Vitamin C is very important your vitamin e vitamin d zinc and protein is they are all important and we will just highlight some of the advantages of taking those on on daily basis vitamin a for example assists with the health of our intestine and the respiratory system and we know that covid 19 attacks the respiratory system and if your immune system is well built i can tell you you could stand some chances of being strong when that happens. Vitamin A rich food include your carrots, sweet potatoes, spinach, broccoli, and red bell pepper, eggs, oranges, and the like. Those are the common sources of vitamin A. Vitamin C antioxidants that contribute to immune defense, supporting various cellular function. Examples also include your citrus, mango, potatoes, broccoli, grapefruits, red pepper. Yes, those of us that like to take pepper. It's a good one. Your tomato juice, strawberries, papaya, and the like. And that is why we always tell people, you can see that beautiful picture on your screen. We tell people, eat rainbow. What does it mean to eat rainbow? Eat variety, various colors of vegetables, various colors of fruits. Because the, the, the more color you consume, the more antioxidants you get, the more phytochemicals you get. So don't just stick to orange, 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 or watermelon, watermelon, watermelon. Try and mix it up. Let me quickly run this slide because I think I'm getting out of time. Vitamin C also is also important. This nutrient promotes the neutralization of free radicals by working as antioxidants. Vitamin E is, a, is an oil-soluble vitamin. So you get it from your vegetable oil you get it from nuts you get it from seed you get it from avocado i know some people like avocado but as an adult half pot of avocado is what you should do daily don't say because dietitian has said you should eat avocado so you go and buy a whole lot during the season and be consuming so much you'll be taking more than what you need half of that a day is very very good zinc also is very important because Many zinc-dependent enzymes in our body and deficiency has been linked with immune dysfunction. Meaning if there's no zinc in your food, there's tendency for some of these vitamins to not work. Examples of food that are rich in zinc include your beans, seed, nuts, meat, poultry, and seafood. So like I said, if you want to do fish, do more scaly fish because i know i'm talking to elderly people anybody above 21 years i advise do more scaly fish you have oil in your scaly fish too it's only that the shining back fish 
you have too much oil in it, which can contribute to you gaining weight rather than staying healthy. So concerning protein, we say specific amino acid found in protein are essential for T cell function, which are cells that protect the body against pathogen. So you, everybody knows sources of protein, your meat, poultry, seafood, eggs, beans, nuts, and seeds all have a lot of protein. So we should do that. In the proportion on the plate I first showed to us, one quarter of your plate. So if you do that for every meal, you have to add that for like three times in a day. And lastly, vitamin D, very, very important. Vitamin D is immune system regulator. It stimulates production of antimicrobial peptides, including those in the epithelial cells of the respiratory tract. And recently I have some of my patients shouting, saying, ah, how can I get vitamin D? How can I get vitamin D? It's from your animal protein too, species like mackerel. Mackerel is a shining bag, but you could do that. You could do that like two to three times in a week. Then we have our early morning sunshine. So we should not stay under hasty for too much. Try and expose yourself to some between the hours of 8 and 11 a.m. Not that one o'clock sun. That one will be too much for us. So exercise causes change in antibodies and the white blood cell. White blood cells are the body's immune system cells that fight diseases. So when you exercise, you have more antibodies that help you to build your immunity. So it is important for us that these antibodies or white blood cells circulate rapidly so they could detect illness earlier on and fight it before they make us to break down. However, no one knows whether the, the changes help prevent infection. But one thing is when you exercise, it has been seen that you're able to pull through the day, you have more strength, your immune system is also strengthened. And in conclusion, I just want to encourage us that it is important that we make healthy choices by eating right, exercising, and when you are doing that, follow the NCDC guidelines and protocol for COVID-19 prevention, such as wearing masks, keeping social distance, washing of hands regularly. So it is not enough to eat healthy and exercise. We also need to follow all these protocols. And I will leave us with the word of Mahatma Gandhi, which says that health is the real wealth and not pieces of gold and silver. So it is important we fight for our health. It is important we make healthy choices. And I want to say thank you for having me this evening. It's been wonderful speaking to each and every one of you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam. Yes, and, um, sir. I believe a lot of uh, misconceptions and conflicting information that we are being, feed, being fed on social media with respect mm -hmm. to what to eat and what not to eat okay. has, been, has been answered. Okay, Sam. Now, going forward, before we go to the uh, uh, before we open the floor for contribution, we have some few uh, comments from the audience in the chat area. So anybody okay. that is unable to make fiscal contribution can drop comments there. We just have only two now that is worth mentioning. We open up the floor for contributions. Let's, nobody should speak for more than two minutes because we are almost 50 now. And uh, I believe everybody wants to talk. So a maximum of uh, um, two minutes for each person. And any comment that is made by another person, we should not repeat the same information. We are in the same house and we are all learning. So ladies and gentlemen, the floor is open. I will put uh, the screen down now so that we'll be able to see the faces of the people talking. Thank you very much. Okay. The floor is open.
I want to see a hand. Uh, I will start with the elders as usual. Um, immediate past president, Professor Adefila, joined us, I think, almost immediately after we started. <coughs> you are welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Do you have any contribution to make, sir? Oh, no, the only thing is just to thank Madam Tolu um, for, for helping us to do the first thing first, to be alive to our engineering. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, you, so thank, you very, thank you very much, sir. <laughs> thank you. Everybody is welcome. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Professor, Professor Wami. Yes. Uh, well, I want to thank the presenter again. So of us have been, so of us have been richly blessed by your wonderful insight into what we should eat. But no, we that eat eba, we are not there with eba on daily basis. What? Some of us still at this age do it two times a day. <laughs> I don't know what they have to say about that, Madam. Okay. Yes. Can I go Madam, ahead and read? Okay. Know, we, we, we take uh, maybe two or three so that we okay. save time. Okay, so no problem. We, we have this uh, first question now. Uh, Dr. Wada. Uh, I think I join uh, everybody in thanking the presenter. Uh, Thank you, sir. It's a wonderful. Uh, talk. My only problem, my only problem is there's a lot of uh, foreign content in the recommended foods. Even the oils. Palm, uh, palm oil is certainly a no-go area. And uh, as, uh, with the current situation in the country, how many people can afford to eat healthy? That is uh, an area that uh, I would want uh, maybe more research done on our foods because a lot of the things that uh, are good, you know, are mostly foreign. And that is my concern. And the other area of concern, it's uh, this uh, our foods nowadays, uh, fruits, vegetables, and so on. Many of them are infected with worms, uh, insecticides, and uh, even fertilizer. So the question is, why trying to eat the recommended food uh, where at the same time putting in a lot of uh, dangerous things in our system? How does an ordinary man you know, overcome this? Thank you. Hello, sir. I have finished you. I think my amateur is muted. Yes, he's muted. I can. Let can somebody... I go ahead to answer the questions? Mahmoud is coordinating. Please go ahead. Please go ahead. Unmute yourself, please. Until Mahmoud unmute himself. Please go ahead. I think he said three questions. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Madam, go ahead. Okay. Thank you so much. I'll start from the first question, which says, for those of us who like to have a swallow, how much of that should you take? And just like that plate that I've just shown us. I want each and every one of us to just fold your fist and see it. that's the size of the swallow you should take as an elderly person. Your fist size with a lot of vegetables. So I'm not saying you should not eat your gari. I'm not saying you should not eat your semo. You can eat any swallow you want. 
But one thing is you should eat it before 5 p.m. as an elderly person. You should eat it with a lot of green leafy vegetable, not with fatty soup like egusi or ogbono soup. Eat your um, edikai, eat a furry roll like the Yorubas will do. Eat um, a way do like the Yorubas will do. Then all the green vegetables that you can lay your hands on, you can eat that. Then the other one is how many people can eat healthy? The truth, sir, is this. We, WHO has advised us that we should look into our locality. We don't need to eat foreign food. We don't need to go outside to buy food or outside the country to say we are looking out for um, LD oil to use. I know that palm oil is a no-go area, but I, I've seen my patients who have come up with their dikai corn without oil, and they like it and love it the way it is. Even if you want to use palm oil, the truth is, you can use very, very little. As an adult, you wouldn't need more than three tablespoons to four in a day. And that's why if you look at some of these foreign recipes, you will see them for breakfast and you should add one teaspoon of oil or one and a half teaspoon of oil. As an adult, we don't need much. So even if you are able to get some money to buy the likes of your canola oil or the likes of your olive oil, when you use it with the right proportion you are supposed to use it, the truth is it's going to stay for a very long time. So you wouldn't need to replace or replenish it. Then the other question about eating fruits. As much as we know that there are the GMO kind of, uh, of fruits available, genetically modified fruits or the fruits that have been um, infested or uh, fertilizers have been used, there are still some fruits that are healthy that we can still eat. Example are the oranges you find around you. And the truth is, we advise as much as possible. Gardening is part of exercise. So for those of us who live where you could do some little gardening, ugu is available. You can put it behind your backyard. Green amaranthos, water leaf, okra, all those kind of vegetables, you could grow them so that you are sure you are eating something from your garden. Who have the likes of copper in their garden? I've had some people have pineapple. And the truth is you can actually consciously search for what we call LD foods and you can get it. I'm not WHO recommendation is that we should make use of what is available in our vicinity. Thank goodness now we grow watermelon, we grow golden melon. We will eat healthy, it is easy to eat healthy. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam. Yes, sir. Uh, Dr. Yorima Suleiman, are you ready with your with your contribution? Uh, yes, I am ready. Okay, go ahead, sir. Now, before uh, you speak, I, I need to introduce you small, so that when you are talking, you will know who is talking. Dr. Rima is a nephrologist. He's a consultant. He's a medical consultant, a nephrologist, and uh, that part of medicine that specializes in uh, kidney. Right? Am I right? Uh, you are right. Uh -huh. Because we also invited uh, doctors and made the thing as wide as possible, so that we get uh, information from various uh, perspectives that will reach you reach the the discussion. So, Dr. Riba, you can talk now. Okay, I just want to uh, re-emphasize on the uh, issue of stress. Uh, we do know that uh, most people in this group are already grown-up people. A lot of us are adults. Now, uh, chronic stress is uh, something that is well known to reduce immunity very well. And this is because... Uh, in chronic stress, you release a lot of uh, cortisol, 
want to have uh, action on the cardiovascular system. And you know that most elderly people these days are either hypertensive or diabetic. And cortisol can also uh, increase your blood sugar if you are already diabetic. And it can also cause diabetic on so because it's an anti diabetic, uh, it's an anti insulin hormone, which actually reduces the level of insulin in your body. And you can actually develop diabetes from that. So it is a proven fact that chronic stress, uh, uh, diabetes. Uh, secondly, um, also, I want to talk on the issue of salt. Now, most of our diet in this environment has a lot of salt because you find out that um, people cook with a lot of salt in it. They put maggi in it. For people, like in my environment, we use what we call potash. There's a local potash that also contains a lot of sodium chloride. And uh, therefore, people have to be very careful about uh, taking salt. I, as a medical doctor, advise patients to take no salt diet at all. Because if you allow them, you already have a lot of sodium chloride in most of these foods that you eat. So what the body actually requires for the normal metabolism is that sodium chloride. And you already have it in a lot of food substances. So there might not be actually need to actually add it. And I also I want to ask this question. Uh, for, I want to ask the presenter. Now, as a nephrologist, I am concerned about the amount of protein that we should take. You said about 160 grams. Now, for people who already have some degree of renal impairment, like diabetes, hypertensive, we know that people who already have chronic diabetes and hypertension have some degree of renal impairment. Will you still recommend that they should take up to 160 grams of protein? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Pierima. Bashir Inwa, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. You have Thank the you. floor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the presentation. I allow the doctor because he's a doctor. Okay. Uh, uh, my question my fellow, is that what, what you the, are my fellow engineer. I stay more than 20 minutes. I will show you that. <laughs> okay. But no, my know. question is that uh, what, what is the right Taking uh, fruit. Is, it? is anybody hearing what, 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 what is in a machine? You know, is saying. I think no, my question is that. Down, down, I, down. Hello, are you hearing me? Yes, you may need to repeat what you said because it wasn't clear initially. I think. I say, what is the right time for taking some uh, uh, fruit? Is it after meal or before meal? Okay, thank you very much, uh, Engineer Bashir. Uh, David Sani, we'll take your own, then we we'll go back to Madame before we come back to the floor again. David Sani, I see your hand is up. Okay, David Sani is not ready. Madam, you can respond to uh, those two issues and also, I think that's it. The, uh, those two, before we go back to the floor again. Okay, the thank you, of, sir. Uh, quantity of protein that we should take and also the right time to, to take uh, fruits before or after meal. Okay, thank you, sir. Like I said, I also have one question from the chat, which says diabetic management, what should be done? But let me start with the doctor's question first. Like I said, the protein recommendation is saying 160 grams. And if you could remember, I said all things being equal. Meaning nutritional counseling is not a one size fit all. For people who have renal challenges, we work with 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 kilogram per body weight standard body weight of the individual. So that is not going to get to as much as that. So that has to be individualized. It's not going to be a one size fit all. The other question says that when it comes to fruits, what time can we take fruits? The truth is World Health Organization has advised us, just make sure you take your fruits 
whether you want to take it before or after. Some people say, oh, the vitamin C will not be well absorbed. It's needed to be taken into empty stomach. The truth is just make sure you take your fruits. Your body will utilize it once it is taken. So for the question that talks about diabetic management, that has to be individualized with respect to the person concerned. It's not a kind of counseling we can deal with on this platform because so many questions will be asked and so many plans will go into place before you come up with a dietary plan for that individual. So this advice that I gave today is for people without what we call comorbid issue, without disease condition that needs dietary management. It's for people who want to live healthy, who don't have to consider maybe their cholesterol level is okay, their blood pressure is good. So in case there are people who have such, we need to talk. We need to individualize the advice. So I think I've handled the three questions. Sir. Okay. <clears throat> Before you, is, are there other questions? Are there other questions from the floor? Now, let's look at the, the questions that are coming from the comments area. From okay, Francisca yeah. Okwesa, she said that, like, it's a wonderful presentation. And let me tell you, like, everybody that commented in the comment area, they say it's a wonderful presentation. So we share the comments with you so that you see for yourself. We don't need to bring it up here. I only extracted those that have uh, questions. Thank what you, she Zach. added is that she, she learned that oranges these days are not safe because they are GMO. Most of them are also seedless. As so seedless. can you comment about the issues associated with GMO food? Are they healthy? If they are not healthy, what are the issues associated with them? And how do we identify which one is GMO and which one is not GMO? Oh. Thank you. Um, concerning GMO fruit, it's just unfortunate that in this part of the world, we don't have our fruits being identified. Like if you go to stores outside the country, they would have labeled organic or whether it is not organic. So it's a big concern, I'll tell you the truth. But one thing I've come to realize is that some of these oranges, when we go to our villages, we we, we surely know that those ones are not the GMO or genetically modified kind of fruits. And when we go to our local markets too, we will know because most of them have seeds in them. One thing with some of these GMO is that you won't seed seed, seed in them. So when you go to a place where you see the kind of fruit you bought today, there's no seed, they call it seedless, this or that. It should give you that consciousness to know that you shouldn't go there next time. And like I also said, I encourage some of us, we can make conscious efforts to source for LD fruits. It's, it's just a matter of making that choice. The truth is, if we do that consciously, we'll be able to get that. And someone was also asking, what, what are the benefits of mixing our fruits? Like I said it in the presentation, it's rainbow. The more colors you have, according to the quantity that is being advised, like I said, when you don't do more than four servings of fruits in a day, mix four colors, it will help you to have option of having a lot of antioxidants, a lot of phytochemicals, which will help to build your immunity. So the um, advice that I gave for four fruits today is not for everybody. If you are diabetic, it's not for you. If you have renal issue, it's not for you. We need to individualize your counseling. We need to come to the table and discuss about channeling a way forward. So everything is based on your state, your health status. So I think I've addressed that. Yes. Mm -hmm. So let me emphasize on that. The, the, prescription, the food prescription that she gave today, 
this lecture, what to eat and the quantity to eat is not for everybody. We need to get that clear. If you have an underlying condition, mm -hmm. like you have renal uh, complications, you are diabetic, you need to speak with a doctor or you need to see her for a special prescription. In other words, if you have underlying conditions, you remember that, that phrase from NCDC, if you have underlying conditions, do not follow this prescription. You may need to contact her or a, a specialist or another specialist for a specialized uh, uh, visit that will be specific to the condition you are undergoing. Yes. Do not go and take 150 grams of uh, protein. Uh, fat, protein or 35 mm -hmm. grams of uh, salt or this yeah. if you have an underlying condition. Now, um, moving forward, we have uh, a question, another question from uh, um, Olumayowa James. It's related to the diabetic uh, uh, question that you treated earlier, and I think he must have gotten his answers from that, which you say something that we need to discuss outside the this thing. So if you have that per profile, we, the, we are going to share the presentation with uh, all the participants here, and her contact information is there, so you can continue to engage uh, uh, further. We also have another one from uh, Ola Lekan Shotunde. Most of us work late and tend to eat into the night. Can we still eat our gari in the night, but in hand, in hand fish portion, portion on daily, daily basis? basis. It's a follow-up question that uh, Professor Waime asked. So perhaps you combine and address it with the, with the, Next question from uh, Professor Ojile. That what effect or impact do we get from mixture of fruit? What is the percentage or proportion of fruit to be added to get a smoothie? Okay. Over to you, madam. Okay. Uh, let me start from the last question, talking about percentage or proportion of food to be added to smoothie. This is my advice that I always give don't have more than two to three okay now because we are even recommending four portion of fruit per day you should you could go ahead to take three portion of fruit serving but you can also have vegetables the likes of your cucumber the likes of carrots the likes of spinach they are all vegetables and like um engineer said the slides will be shared one fist size or let me say one serving of fruit is that your small portion of apple or your small portion of oranges so if you want to have your smooth your, your fruit in the form of smoothie you could do one or two and add that and then you add your carrot or you add your cucumber then later in the day but in case you don't know the combination of smoothie that is being given to you it is best that you don't take more than a glass of smoothie per day, which is 250 meals. That's the recommendation. Let's say you are buying it from a smoothie shop. Don't do more than 250 meals of smoothie per day. That would be a good portion to go with. Then the other question. Can you help me with the other question, sir? Yeah, the other question was, uh, most of us, walk tend to walk okay, late okay, in the okay, night. Okay. Can so, we still eat our feast of uh, <laughs> when we come back? Like I said it. I said you shouldn't eat swallow after 6 p.m. for elderly ones. That is the advice. So in case you come late at night, what do I advise my patient? Although it's a difficult place to find yourself, you are tired and you want to revitalize. If you are not watching your weight, you could go a step further. Instead of a fist size, you could do half of your fist and eat a lot of vegetable. But if you are trying to watch your weight, I advise, why don't you just do your, your vegetables and your protein and go to bed? Or if you like 
pepper soup. You could do your catfish pepper soup once in a week or once in two weeks. We need to learn to eat light at night. Let me just say that. And that's why we should make room for not skipping of meals. I always tell people, like, you know, the old saying that says, eat like a king in the morning, like a prince in the afternoon, and like a pauper at night. The simple logic behind it is your dinner is just something to get you to the following day. It's not a time of feasting. So when you come back late, just take fresh, um, a cool shower that will help you to relax and probably make you not to want to eat too much of food. So vegetables and protein with the right portion of protein at night is actually good. At times I advise people to leave out those, those carbohydrates. I advise people to leave out those carbohydrates. So the right time to eat your dinner is between 6 and 6.30. Anything after that time, you need to watch what you eat very, very closely. That's it, sir. Thank you very much, madam. Um, yes, sir. There, there's another question from, I told you, we engineers, we know how to ask a... Question. Questions. Sorry, we are bombarding you today. No problem. But, but, but you are expecting it. Yes, sure. Okay. There's another question from uh, uh, Professor, okay, we've de deal with Professor Ojile from uh, Engineer Oyebanji Adetona. He said that, it is said that fruits are better taken on empty stomach. Is it true? Okay, I've had cause to answer that question when one of my patients asked me. I researched into it and I realized that WHO recommendation is that make sure you take your fruits on daily basis. Whether you take it on empty stomach or you take it with your food, it is important that you take it daily. So whichever one you are comfortable with, it's okay. No problem. Just make sure you take your fruit. I've not been able to research into bioavailability of fruits, but I'm working by the recommendation. And what I read then was that just make sure you utilize taking your fruit on a daily basis. Your body will use it whether it's on an empty stomach or you eat it with your meals or you eat it as your snacks, it is okay. Thank you very much, uh, uh, madam. Um, yes. He's also looking for madam's uh, WhatsApp number. The paper we are going, the paper she's presenting contain her phone number, which we are going to share with the with the, with, the, with, the, with the participants. So you have her number from the contact information. Uh, another question from uh, Michael Oloyede. Mm -hmm. He said that, this, that was a question from, okay. He said that from the little I know, GMOs, take longer before getting bad or spoiled, and they give bigger fruits for food security. This is a concern they might be harmful for, for, for consumption. So what I may need to add here is actually there's, there's a lot of uh, debate going on with respect to uh, whether GMO foods are healthy or not. So, Madam will comment, and you may also take it with the next one from uh, Dr. Wada. Is 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 a question that are all seedless oranges, GMOs? But Madam, I want Dr. Wada to answer this uh, question because he's a farmer, an mm -hmm. orange farmer. He should help us. Yes. Yes, let him speak on the last question and you take the, the, the food security issue associated with a GMO, whether eating GMO is actually bad. Yes, uh, Mahmoud. Yes, sir. Thank you. I asked that question because uh, I was worried. It goes against my uh, drive to live very long because I grow tanjo. 
which is sinless. And okay. I enjoy it very much. Uh, it's actually, uh, as uh, Madame had said, I grew this in my backyard. It's called tanjo. It's a crossbreed between orange and tangerine, and it's seedless. And I've been uh, taking that for over 20 years now. So I'm just wondering uh, if it is actually a GMO, because uh, I doubt very much. So I think you've answered the, the question. If you have a seedless orange from your farm, and no. your farm is, is not GMO, it means it's not all seedless oranges that are GMOs. Mm -hmm. It was a, one of the participants that commented, that made assertion that the way to identify GMO oranges is that they are, they, they, they are seedless. It's, it's, it's not true. I also have, a, I know some couple of people that also grow grapes in, a, in Zaria. They grow seedless grapes and they are non GMO. So we need to, like she said, from her answer, I remember what she said that normal GMO foods are labeled. That is the only way you can identify them. There's no any assurance, there's no any other sure way. In, in, in developed countries, in Europe and America, they are identified. You see, they carry a label. But when it's crossing our own border, coming in here, most of the time they don't have that label, so we don't have a means of identifying them. So the truth is, not all, all seedless are GMOs. Okay, Repa. Madam, you may add something. I support what Prof just said. The truth is, there's no way we can know whether this is GMO except we have experts in the house who can help us with it. When you're outside the country, the shopping or the shopping malls will have labeled organic or GMOs, then you would now decide which one you will want to go for. So my own suggestion is this. If you can identify the source of your food, then you are confident that you are eating the good one. If you can't, then I think we need to do more research or probably that will be a presentation for another day where people are learned in that. Um, thank you. Thank you, Madam. I, I also want to suggest if you want to avoid GMO, don't buy fruits in the supermarkets. Go and buy in your local market. We know there's COVID now, but with the proper uh, this thing, because most of the fruits that are sold in our local markets, in the in the local markets, are from farms, from our local uh, farms in most cases. So, any other any other comments? Any other comment? Any other comment? Okay, in the absence of any other comment, I would like to call on uh, uh, Dr. Yusuf Atta to, to wrap up and, and do the closing prayer. No, no closing prayer, just wrap up, wrap up, wrap up. Mahmoud, before wrap up, please. Mahmoud, before wrap up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We want to appreciate you for this variety that you have brought into our, our discussions. We appreciate. Thank you very much. Sir, how did you know that you are the one I'm going to call after a wrap up? Anyway, I will still get there. I will still call on you. Not more than five minutes. Ablazis Atta, if you are trying to, okay. Yeah, am, am I on? You are on, sir. Okay, thank you very much. 
I will now present the, the wrap up for today's um, uh, today's uh, program. Today's the title of today's presentation that um, that talks about ending is healthy living during the new normal. We are lucky that we had an expert in this area that gave us a very a very good presentation in the person of Tolu Folaromi. Tolu Tolu Folaromi. Tolu Folaromi. She gave us the presentation. She is a consultant dietitian and, and, and a public health expert too. So we are actually lucky that she shared her 30 years of experience in this field with us. She started by giving us the outline of her presentation. The outline of her presentation was um, included introduction, choices to make, choices to make before now, what you should be doing, and building your immunity. Then finally she concluded. The first key thing she did was she defined the new normal. She said the new normal is an era we find ourselves now as a result of COVID-9, where our normal activities have been changed because of the occurrence of the, of the virus okay. in the world. So, so this, 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 this uh, COVID-9 that has already- I didn't finish my meeting. This, this COVID-9 that, that resulted into this new normal, has, it has changed the way we do things. So consequently, we need to change the way we live. So it calls for a healthy living. And in, in, us, in us having a healthy living, we must make right choices. She, list, she listed the choices we need to make. The first one she, she said was that we need to eat fresh, and unprocessed food. We should eat fresh and unprocessed food. And this fresh and unprocessed food, not just, not just eating, eating one type of food, we need to eat it in variety. She suggested that we make, we make sure that our, our fruits are in variety. We should eat nuts and legumes and co. Then um, she gave us a formula which I call half quarter quarter rule. The half quarter quarter rule means when you have a plate of food, when madam or guy is going to cook, cook in the kitchen, half of the plate should contain vegetables. That would be difficult. Vegetables. While one quarter will be chicken and very, very little of um, red, uh, red, red meat. The remaining one quarter will be, will be starch. So she actually advised us that this, this vegetable that we find in our food, it should not be overcooked. It should not be, it should not be over, overcooked. And when we are eating our food, we should avoid eating food late in the evening, late, late in the evening. Then the second choice she, she, she spoke about is what we, we should drink a lot of water. She, she said we should, we, should, we should continuously take a lot of water. She advised that typically in a day, we should take between two, three liters of water per day. And, um, and uh, of course, we know the benefit of taking a lot of water. As a chemical engineer, we know that it will ease the transport in our system. So it's very important we take a lot of water. Again, she, she, she advised again that um, when you are taking fish, the kind of fish we take for people that are above 40 years old, take fish that are scaly because they contain less of um, oil, oil content. Then the, the next thing she talked about was about the, she talked about there's a need for us to moderate the amount of fat and oil we eat. She said we should reduce the quantity of our fat, fat and oil we find in our food, of course, and she ended up suggesting that the best oil we have available is the olive oil and the canon, canon oil. Then another, another healthy choice she advised us on was, um, which is which issue of salt and sugar. In the salt and sugar, she advised that we shouldn't, we shouldn't take more than five grams per day. But of course, we are, we are, already, we are we're already aware that things like our maggi and our seasonings that we take daily already contain salt. So we should, as much as possible, avoid salt as, as we are growing, um, growing old. And the sugar we take, the sugar we, sh we take should be very, very limited. And this sugar comes in different forms. It comes in processed drinks like soft drinks and coke. 
so we should limit the quantity of the soft drinks we, we take. She talked about another choice, which is exercise. She exercised, which is the physical activity. She suggested that typically in a day, we should, we should be able to have an exercise for about 30 minutes. And the kind of exercise she suggested were walking, dancing, gardening, biking, biking, um, even doing um, household, household, household chores. There are some of those things we need to, we need to do. Then, finally, then she suggested, we went, we went further, and she suggested ways on how we can build our immunity. The ways we can build our immunity that one, she suggested that we should stay active, we should watch the kind of diet we take. Two, we should, we should stay on top of stress. That means we should have less, we should try to manage the stress in our life. We should manage the stress in our life. Uh, four, we should, we should have enough sleep. She suggested typically in a day, we should have a minimum of seven to eight hours of sleep a day. And again, she asked us, we should be strategic in the food supplement we take. There are various, various kind of food supplements nowadays we find people hopping at, around. At times summarize, so that, summarize okay. and learn, so that we don't have another, like, like another paper. Finally, you can see people are dropping out one after the other, so that we, we don't so have finally, an zero. So fi finally, she suggested that um, whatever we are doing, yeah. we should, whatever we are doing, we should adhere to the NCD when we are doing when we eat the right kind of food, we do the right kind of exercise, but we should adhere to the NCDC protocol of washing our hands regularly, using no mask, and uh, social distancing. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Mohamed, over to you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Atta, for rescuing us today. Uh, I was actually had in mind that I was going to call uh, Professor Adefla, the past president, to, on behalf of the Nigerian Society of Chemical Engineers, to thank uh, uh, Mrs. Tolu for learning for us today as if he knew. So he started the, the vote of thanks. So maybe you just continue from where you stopped, sir. Thank you very much. Mahmoud, you ended it up with our a, a inaugural PTDF chair. <laughs> well. Yourself, Ablaziz, and myself, <laughs> thank you very much. I'm sure <laughs> it's not conscious. <laughs> it is um, not actually. Uh, no. I'm just looking for people. On, on a on a very very serious note, um, uh, Mrs. Uh, Tolu Folaring, want to thank you very much for this variety that you have brought into chemical engineering. We appreciate you. And we particularly thank you for leaving with us your credentials. You can be sure that we will patronize you with thank questions, you. with questions, and also yeah, patronize yeah. you to help you to be able to keep alive. That is, will come for consultancy, which you can benefit from us. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for having and me. I want to thank the audience for listening rapturously. And I'm sure, like I've said to her, she's going to have, you know, expect many questions. I'm sure we are going to ask a lot of questions. Um, uh, perhaps, let me now thank uh, Mahmoud for this variety that he has brought into, our, into chemical engineering. I'm not surprised at all. We know that very many times we have a lot of variables that we deal with uh, in chemical engineering. And that's why he has added this particular one. And when we do dimensional analysis to establish which one we should take first and so on and so forth, this particular one will not drop off because there are some variables that drop off when you are doing your dimensional analysis. Thank you very much, um, Engineer Mahmoud. And you can see that because of what you are doing in the HSC group, a lot of other groups are coming up. I'm sure 
Um, I had Mr. President talk the other time, briefly. I'm sure he's very, very happy with you. Not him only. All of us are happy with you. Thank you very much. Keep the flag flying. Thank you all. We thank God for guiding us to this particular point. And he will continue to guide us so that we'll continue to keep alive and have the likes of Mrs. Tolu Fularen to come and chair, chair us up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Mr. President, last word before I call on uh, Engineer Yunus to do the closing prayer. Yeah, Hello. Mr. Mr. President, sir. Oh, sorry, Mamu, that was a little distracted. Uh, sorry. And each time I struggle to find my pointer to unmute. So I believe uh, my own Oga and Master Prof, uh, immediate past president, Professor Adekula, has uh, said it all. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to say that this is. Uh, one of the best lectures uh, that I've listened to uh, in this series. Uh, not surprised. The, uh, Tolu is a really brilliant professional, and we thank her uh, most profoundly uh, for this uh, guidance that if we take seriously, given the new normal, uh, it will help us, it will serve as a shield against this uh, parasite that is taking the world uh, as a storm. I want to thank uh, Mahmoud uh, as always, and your team, the HSE uh, group, for uh, raising the bar. I encourage other sectorial groups to try and give you a run for your money. I want to just an observation with respect to uh, GMOs. I believe that there is a strong protocol for GMO entry into Nigeria. Okay. And I hope and pray that the regulator uh, is up to uh, the billing. I know that in recent times, there was a storm with respect to introduction of uh, GMO beans. Uh, it was a nationwide storm where there was some uh, uh, and some uh, approval for trial for you know controlled trial, and everybody screamed. Uh, so. I want to believe that uh, we are very conscious of uh, GMO. Uh, but that's not to lose sight of the fact that most of the fruits and things, we have had hybridized uh, fruit production for ages, even as a young chap. In the primary school then, we used to crossbreed oranges and, uh, and grapes. Uh, we just lost all that uh, due to our uh, cost of oil. But uh, I think, and I'm sure, I mean, I think and I believe that uh, GMO, GMO is so scary that uh, finding its way into the country is, uh, is going to be difficult. Uh, 
And I hope and pray that uh, the regulators live up to their billing. Are you, are you still there, sir? What? Done. It seems to have been done. Okay. Um, is there a loose? Uh, thank you. Uh, I can't call you chairman because we have a president. <laughs> Maybe I can say you are the facilitator. <laughs> uh, we thank God for this opportunity that he has given us to come together factually because uh, we are not close to each other, but we are seeing each other, we can hear each other. We thank God for the good aid that he has given us for us to be able to meet as a family. Uh, we thank God for bringing in a resourceful person who has uh, also shared a, a, a pool of uh, knowledge with us. And uh, we pray that that will be of use to us uh, we want to pray that God will continue to strengthen us as a family. We want to pray that God will continue to give us good health. He will guide us. He will guide us. And uh, we pray he will keep us till next time when we uh, have another uh, presentation of, of this importance. Thank you very much. Uh, let's say let's our prayers as we live here, since uh, we are both Muslims and Christians. I don't want to recite. Otherwise, if I were to be with Ejina Mahmoud, then we will say prayers together. We go answer our prayer. I mean. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Madam Tolu, thank you very, very much. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. I know, I know how busy you are. And uh, I know for how long I've been chasing you on this. And you still have uh, time to put this together and honor us today. Honestly. Thank you very much. We, we really You're appreciate welcome, this. Yeah. And God will reward you. Like uh, Professor Adefila has said, the doctors, nurses, dietitians, all the medical workers, your reward is, uh, we try to reward you on earth, but truly your reward is, is in heavens. Uh, <laughs> I didn't mention the engineers that without us, your work, you can't even do anything. Take note of that. Because all the equipment you use, all the decisions, where are they coming from? That's that's what the lighter note anyway. We really appreciate your presence today. Thank you very much. So, ladies and gentlemen, we meet again next month of July, sorry, of September, the last Saturday of God willing. Thank you very much. So, everybody, have a nice day. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you for having me. We'll, we'll, Thank you, ma'am. We'll be seeing you. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's one of us now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you, Yes, Mahmoud. sir. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. Wow. Thank you. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Yeah, thank you so much.